and the Planning Commission Board of Adjustments for Wednesday, August 14th, 2024. And we will begin with a call to order. Um, and now the roll call. And Peter, would you mind doing us the honor? Absolutely. Ayers? Here. Brisbane? Here. Weaver? Here. Tice? Here. Zierden? Here. Thank you. And would everyone please rise and we'll say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge the allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. And we will begin with the approval or any amendments to the agenda. If anyone would like to make a motion to approve the agenda, or if there are any edits, please say so now. So moved. Well, sorry. That's fine. I'll second. Mm -hmm. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion has passed. And then moving on to an open forum. So this is for any items that are not currently on the agenda. If you have any input, please approach the podium, state your name, address, and feel free to share. All right, I don't see anyone approaching. Oh, sorry. Um, if, if there is a topic that is on the agenda, we'll have kind of a public input for that topic, but if it's not on the topic, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right, then we will move on to approval of the July 9th um, meeting minutes. If we have any changes or if we have approvals. Any I'll make a motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. Any seconds? I'll second it. We have a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed. All right, we're going to move on to new business. The first item up is a variance application number V24006 for Lauren John Kerfield Trust. And we will just pass over to that. And we will start with a staff report. All right, Madam Chair, members of the board, public notice is sent out for variance application V24006 for Lauren and Melinda Kerfield of 29845 Shoreview Lane. <clears throat> the applicant has submitted the required pre-app meeting with staff. The applicant has filed the appropriate variance application. The applicant has paid the appropriate fee and the public hearing was published in the legal newspaper and the property owners within 350 feet were mailed notice of the hearing. Public notice was given to the DNR as the property is in a shoreland overlay district and the DNR declined to comment. Variance request is requesting a variance from the road right of way of 30 feet to construct an 8.1 by 18 foot addition, a 7.9 foot by 22 foot addition, 12 foot by six and a half foot addition and a 16.3 by six foot addition onto an existing non-conforming resident located 8.8 .8 feet from the road right of way. Summary of the property includes lot eight of the Breezy Point Estates was platted in 1964. The property is in a unit, is a duplex unit in a residential neighborhood bordered by other residential property on the Breezy Point Peninsula. There are other multi-dwelling units near this property of similar character and commercial zone properties as well. The property does exceed the 50 foot lake setback. It was constructed at the time of a 75 foot setback. See the attached survey and building envelope denoted by the dashed lines. The height of the proposed construction is currently under the 35 feet structure height and the applicant is requesting the variance from the road right of way to add additions to the building and interior parking and residential additions as well. <clears throat> the applicant currently does not appear to be reducing any existing setbacks within respect to reducing the right-of-way setback. The applicant was before the Planning Commission at the last meeting and was denied due to the proposed construction not being consistent with the public published request. The property is over the 25% impervious surface coverage. It currently sits at 36% and the applicant is proposing to reduce that to 35.9%. Most of the proposed additions are going over existing hardscaped parking areas 
and additional hardscape is being removed. On the maps, we can see the TBR area for the to be removed areas that are exhibited and attached in the color survey in the color coded illustration. So if the board needs um, to view those, we can pop those up at the screen at that time too. If allowed, some of the additions would allow the applicant some possible additional indoor parking, which seems to be a reasonable request. Both the city and the applicant would seem to be beneficial, benefited by the variance with the increase in interior parking in an already congested area and to mitigate stormwater runoff in a shoreland area. Due to the de minimis nature of the encroachment, stack recommends the commission could consider approval based on the information presented at this time. And the, um, we received no comments in written or verbal from any of the neighbors. And the PNZ recommends the following condition if approved that uh, first floor roadside addition granted through the parking is used for vehicular parking. So that concludes the staff report. If you have any questions, please ask. Um, I did ask the public works supervisor to, uh, um, to the meeting to um, answer any questions the board may have about snow removal and some of the street maintenance out there. So, so And would this be the time to invite him to speak? Or? Um, I think as the applicants present, if, uh, if Mr. Zierd wants to speak up then, you know, then the board can ask him if you got any specific ones, so yeah. Perfect, thank you. Thank you. Does anyone have questions for Peter at this time? All right, perfect. Well then we will invite the applicant up to the podium. Please state your name and address. And I'm just gonna uh, make a note on the record that you have been here the last meeting, so we have a lot of information already on file. Um, the reason why we did deny was because there was some additional information that wasn't on the survey. So if you right. wanted to focus on that for this meeting, feel free to do that. Or if you wanna go through the whole presentation, that is your choice. But um, I know that we, the biggest point was just some of the incomplete or missing information that we didn't have at that time. Sure. Lauren Kirkville, uh, 29845 Shoreview Lane. Um, just general information, uh, this building was built in 1983, including the garage, as we believe it was built at the same time. We've been there for eight years. In November, it'll be eight years. Um, our goal is to have the additional bedroom space and garage space for parking. Also will give us the parking benefit with the parking uh, below. And the dining room extension out on the lake side will be six feet by 16 feet with additional bedroom space above that equal in size. We are removing Concrete, 300 feet of concrete on the side, on the south side. Uh, it is highlighted on one of your plans. It'll be the next one, I believe. In green is what would, the concrete would be removed to replace the uh, pervious, which we are covering for the proposed bedroom addition. And that is 300 feet of additional grass for snow uh, placement and that should help that cause. Um, the road right away on our last meeting I just wanted to note was it was noted in the meeting that the road right away was plowed and that is not the case. The road is uh, marked on the layout and the road right away where that is from the edge of the pavement to the edge of the road right away is not plowed. So it isn't, uh, they plow strictly within a foot either way of the uh, existing asphalt road because there are mailboxes, trees, power poles in that road right away. It's a utility easement, <laughs> so that should not be an issue. Uh, parking, as far as we're concerned, uh, we have, in our eight years, we have never had a, 
a violation or know of any neighbors that have had a violation for parking. So uh, we consider that to be a non-issue also. I think that's the summary. Do you have any questions? So you're not putting a sidewalk back into that exist to the new pad for the no, entrance? No, no, we were uh, we're going to leave that as grass. We're going to use our um, garage for our access. We have very limited use in the winter, and uh, we don't feel it'll be an issue in the summer. And if you put the screen up with the three additions uh, where we're doing the work, I could clarify the C being the is a deck now. We would be using that deck space and just extending our slab that six feet of where the C is, six by 16. And that was deck before, which was uh, impervious prior. And the A is currently concrete, that is the garage space we're adding, 7, 9 by 22. And the B is the bedroom space we're adding to maintain our um, main floor bedroom with uh, egress out the front at the street view there. So the, the C is going to be the dining area? Dining with, yes, with bedroom space above. And from what I understand for the record, you're not in, uh, increasing any impervious coverage. It's kind of a swap at this point with the... Yes. Yep. So B is concrete present? Currently, that is uh, pervious. That is rock um, um, aggregate. Loose aggregate. You're going to keep that the same? That would be an addition. That would be the addition. It'll be, oh, it'll okay. Be slab, that's right. All but right. That's yeah. part of the trade off with to be removed. Oh, okay. Hmm. <clears throat> and it is noted that the concrete would be removed out to the street which I don't, I didn't clarify if that was necessary, but I don't think, uh, you know, that, that uh, right away area in concrete, because that's not included in the percentage, I don't believe. But for aesthetics, I think it would look best at the lawn, go all the way out to the road, to the asphalt. And just for clarification, the addition on the front, which would be kind of A, is it's all for parking. There isn't, on the lower level, there isn't any um, living quarters. It's all parking for that. Correct. Okay. Yep, that would be a two car garage. And the front elevation, I don't know if you can bring that up, um, <coughs> would show the uh, garage doors and the front view. So the, on the left would be our garage, and then that window would be our egress window for the bedroom. And it's, then the front line is the existing line of what's currently there. The garage, the front of the garage now is equal to what, our, or the future eight foot garage would be equal to what's there currently. And that's been there from day one. Well, and I'm just kind of going through um, 
the notes that I had from before. So just kind of reminding us the reasons or the things that we wanted to see was one, the build out for the plan for the deck, which you've provided um, to confirm that parking was in the garage. It wasn't, um, there's no parking in the right of way that your intent is to park in the garage. That's what the garage is for. Um, you've confirmed what the plan for the entryway walkway is by removing that. Um, stormwater, I believe one of the diagrams showed a, a circle where the stormwater drainage is at. And the drainage, yes. And then um, number five was just to make sure that we're not exceeding any of the current impervious coverage, which you confirmed is, is not the case in this. So is there any other concerns or things that anyone's thinking of that we didn't address? All right, thank you. At this time, we're gonna open up a public hearing. So if anyone in attendance would like to approach the podium, state your name, address, and feel free to give us and share input. Hi, my name is Wendy Wurr, and I'm at 29825 Shoreview Lane, right next door. And we are, I'm very much in favor of them doing this. I think any time a neighbor can take an older property and bring it new life and add to the curb appeal and take away outdoor parking and make it indoor parking, I think that adds to the, not only the value of your neighborhood, but also the value of their living there and makes it so they're gonna come more often and I have my neighbors up here more often. I think that adds to our value as a neighbor seeing their home um, be what they want it to be so they stay and continue to add to our neighborhood. Thanks. Thank you. Tom, we're 29825 Shoreview Lane. Uh, we have the fun part, and I hope Madam Chairperson uh, agrees. Our little street, Shoreview Lane, is kind of unique where we have a really cool spot to live where everybody gets along. We don't have anybody that we really hate or don't want or wish they would move. Everybody gets along. From Jim Radke's house at the four-way stop down to Marcy's house, everybody gets along. And that's kind of how Mike and Lauren and Mindy and and Fonda, uh, that's how we get along also. And we're all here because Breezy makes us feel better. Whether we live here or we come here on the weekends or whatever, and I think any time that we can use some common sense to help one of our families have more fun and enjoy their family more, I think it's just common sense that says that's a good thing to do. I am 100% in favor of, of doing this for them, for for approving this uh, as it has zero effect on me. And I hope that the, the, the group decides as well. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> Hi, commissioners. My name is Larry Martini. I'm at 29866 Sand Beach Drive. Uh, my wife, Linda, and I have owned that property since October of 2004. It is our... Um, homestead. It's our primary residence. Um, we support both this application and the next one that you'll be uh, listening to, uh, variance number seven. We were encouraged by Fond and Mike to come tonight. Um, and upon review of the materials, we are really impressed that the project is going to reduce the impervious coverage, albeit small, in both cases. That's a big win. We're also impressed that it's going to eliminate parking in the driveway or part of the right-of-way. Parking in the garage is something I desire to do, but I have a tiny garage. Um, my garage is on Sand Beach Drive, and the back of it is on Shoreview Lane. We're just three lots down from Mike and Fonda. But it is important to support this. Um, your professional staff has even uh, indicated that you should consider approval as commissioners. So thank you for letting me share my thoughts. And I won't come up on number seven, but my thoughts are the same, unless I should do that. And Chair, you'll indicate that. Thank you. Thank you.
you. Is there anyone else that would like to approach? All right, then we're going to close the open public forum and we're going to move on to commission and deliberation. So I'm gonna start with reading the findings. So notice a decision finding of facts. Um, the planning commission shall consider the following in its decision and make a written findings concerning the variance approval or denial. Number one, the strict interpretation of the ordinance would be impractical because of circumstances relating to lot size, shape, topographic, or other characteristics of the property not created by the landowner. And we have found that, yes, the encroachment was created by a prior landowner. Number two consideration is the deviation from the ordinance with any attached conditions uh, will be still in keeping with the spirit and intent of the ordinance. And we find that, yes, the encroachment into the setback is minimal, and it's pretty much in line with the existing building facade. Uh, consideration number three, the land use created by the variance is permitted in the zoning district where the property is located. We find, yes, that it is seasonal year-round residential use, and that is allowed in this zoning district. Uh, number four, the variance will not alter the essential character of the locality, and we find, yes, that the proposed request is residential, similar to adjacent neighbors. <clears throat> and number five, the variance is not for economic reasons alone, but for reasonable use of the property and does not exist um, under the current ordinance. ordinance. And yes, the existing owners didn't create the encroachment. The prior owner did. Um, if the strict application of the ordinance was applied to the existing owners, they wouldn't be allowed to construct the additions as proposed. Uh, one of the recommended conditions is <coughs> confirming and verifying and adding that the first floor roadside addition granted through this variance is for vehicular parking, which we did confirm. So those are the findings and the considerations that we have. Uh, any questions or debate here for the commission, or do we have any motions? I would make a motion to approve variance application V24006. Do we have a second? A second. We have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, motion has passed. And moving on to the next item on the agenda, which is a variance application V24007 for Michael and Fonda Schutz. Um, we will start with a staff report. So Peter, take it from there. Madam Chair, members of the commission, the variance application V24007 for Michael and Fonda Schutz, property address 29853 Shoreview Lane. <clears throat> the applicant required the applicant attended the required pre-application meeting with staff. They've applied the appropriate fee for the variance and the appropriate application for the variance. Public notice of the hearing was published in the newspaper and mailed to the property owners within the 350 foot distance required by ordinance. Public notice was also given to the DNR and the DNR declined to comment. Uh, variance request is they're requesting a road right-of-way setback of 30 feet to construct an 8 by 18 foot addition, a 7.8 foot by 22 foot addition, and a 6 foot by 16.3 foot addition onto an existing non-conforming residence located 11 feet from the road right-of-way. Summary of the property includes lot 7 of the 17th edition of the Breezy Points Estates was platted in 1964. The property is in a duplex unit shared with the residential neighborhood bordered on the side, and it's also bordered by other residential property on the Breezy Point Peninsula. There are other multi-dwelling units near this property of similar character and some commercially zoned properties as well. The property exceeds the lake setback of 50 feet as it was constructed when a 75 foot setback was required. And that can be seen on the survey attached and the building envelope and denoted by the dashed lines. The height of the proposed construction is under the allowed 35 feet structure height. The applicant is requesting the variance from the city road right of way setback to add on to the existing duplex. The applicant is not reducing any existing setback distance within respect to the road right of way. This applicant was before the planning commission at the last meeting and was subsequently denied due to inaccuracy of the proposed construction not being consistent with the published request of the variance application. The applicant has since resubmitted the revised drawings to better illustrate the scope of the proposed construction, which is now consistent with the request published. The property owner is over the 25% allowed impervious surface coverage 
and it currently sits at 29.2%, and they were proposing to reduce to 29.1%. Most of the proposed additions are going over existing hardscape parking areas, and additional hardscape is being removed. See to be removed area on the attached color survey on the color code coded illustration showing the removal areas and the addition areas. If allowed, some of the additions could allow the applicant additional indoor parking, which seems to be a reasonable request. The applicant has also dedicated additional stormwater management areas to the side of the building to address any runoff associated with the structural modifications. Both the city and the applicant could benefit by the variance approval, which increases interior parking in an area already congested and to mitigate stormwater runoff in a shoreland area. Due to the de minimis nature of the encroachment, staff recommends the com commission consider approval based on the information presented at this time. And again, that concludes the staff report. If the commission has any questions on road maintenance or anything in the area, we do have the public works director here that can speak on that if they have any, um, if the board has any questions on that as well too. That concludes the staff report, thank you. Thank you, Peter. Any questions for Peter? All right. I got one, just construction equipment. Once this project starts, it's gonna have a lot of construction equipment sitting. And if it happens in the winter, Joel probably can't get through, but he can go around, I guess. Huh? Um, that's a very real possibility. <laughs> yeah. It's not unique to this situation right. or any other construction project or um, emergency <laughs> services. I mean, there's a variety of things that can obstruct our plowing. And typically, you know, if it's a real problem, we get law enforcement and get things moved. Then we come back and clean up. So okay. um, cooperation would be appreciated to you know, the whole neighborhood to make mm -hmm. it work, but. Yeah. yeah, I can see that. Is there anything that you'd want to add as far as um, plowing or any other considerations or things that you'd like to bring up? No, I, I mean, um, I'm sure you're all aware of the mailbox line. Um, generally speaking, mailbox line, 911 posts that are thin two to three feet edge of the pavement. That's typically what we're using for snow storage. Uh, some years, I mean, we strive to not use the right of way because it generates a lot of complaints. Um, but some years we will have to, as the snow builds up, the road gets narrower, push it back. I believe a couple of years ago it was four or five times um, it causes damage to the right of way. That's what it's meant for. Um, and it can cause problems unforeseen problems, but um, I don't see this changing any of our normal operation. So um, the stormwater, you know, if that actually does move some water away from the road, that would be good because the uh, shore view is very flat. There's it's not, I mean, it's, it's good sand ground, but um, water does like to sit in certain places. So anything that could be done would be beneficial. Thank you. All right, at this time, we'd like to invite the applicant up to the podium. Please state your name and address. And just as a reminder, this um, request was fully reviewed back in July, and we had a few things that needed to be added or, or at least completed. And so if you wanted to focus on those, feel free, or if you want to go through the whole thing, that is your choice. Um, but feel free to begin. Okay, go ahead. Um, Mike and Fonda Schutz, we're at 29853 Shoreview Lane in Busy Point. Um, and I guess it's kind of a similar to what Lauren and Mindy are doing. We're the other half of that building. Um, I had just a couple things written down from our denial letter that we got. But actually, I must say that I, it, it was a very good process for us because it did make us go back and just really shore everything up. And we had some really <coughs> good feedback and suggestions on, on pulling back the one side of our garage four feet. And we did that. And... It was very good, so thank you for that. Um, it is our hope to be in cooperation and collaboratively working together, and we worked very hard to stay within our um, previous impervious numbers um, out of respect, because we, we do understand we want to be good stewards of the land that we're on and, and enjoy the property and kind of have it work um, synergistically together. Um, 
But with that said, it says, um, like, the reason number one was just that the area on the point was limited parking and um, more structures in the setback would make everything more congested. And I guess our thought on that, it's already been voiced, but being able to put vehicles away, pull them out of that sort of congested area so they're not there, to me is a, is a positive and is kind of the solution to that particular point. Um, and our renovations do directly address that. Um, and we do understand the intent of the chapter 153 is to reduce the nonconformities unless there's a practical difficulty. And we we'd respect that. And I kind of go with the letter of the law and the spirit of the law. And I, I, I can see that bleeding through and we do respect it. And I would say if all is kept as, as it is now, because we live here full time, having our vehicles out close to the road because that's our only option, that creates more of a hazard and kind of adds to the congestion versus if we could pull it away and, and get it out of there, it just makes it more safe. And to me, that that is very much showing the respect for the intent of what this Chapter 153 is trying to say, is it's all about public safety, and we're all about that too. Um, and then it was saying um, properties over the maximum impervious, and it is, and that's how we bought it. It was already over it when we bought it. So for us, we are just asking to kind of do a swap. Um, if you bring up where we're adding versus what we're giving back. We're, at, we're, we're giving back just a teeny bit more than what we're adding. And some of it is over already existing um, pervious too. So we're just putting a, a, a room on there versus like a deck. So it's the same as what Lauren and Mindy are doing. Um, and, and as far as the short view lane being difficult to plow, well, we're hoping to alleviate that a little bit. Again, it kind of all goes back to being able to put things away, I think, opens it up and makes it just more open if there is any sort of issue or congestion. So, um, and the purpose of the setback being a buffer and being able to load and unload and not being in the roadway, we agree with that too. We'd rather have a place that we can load and unload, which would be in our garage most of the time, um, unless there's some significant thing that we're doing. But... I guess, yeah, the actual construction would be different, but absolutely willing to work and collaborate and make sure that it's safe and open and free as much as possible for everybody. But are there questions about the project that we can clarify? So I would just point out what changed from the last time. So okay. one of the things was um, item number four on here um, was not on the previous one. So if you just want to kind of explain I remember what before. that project oh, is. That's existing um, deck right now, so it's already pervious. But just like Lauren and Mindy, we're pulling our building out to be dining area right there with bedroom above. So exact same. I mean, it would just be mirror image with Lauren and Mindy. Yeah. And then um, on the other, there's one that's green, coated with green. That shows what we're giving back what we're getting rid of, and that that kind of shows a better image of what's what's right now pervious that's going to be back to, or no, what, impervious? I'm getting it backwards. Yeah. Right now that's impervious, and we're giving it back to be pervious, yeah, so grass, landscape, things like that, so, which is good, so we're kind of doing a swap, and I'm very happy to say that we're, we're totally within our numbers, and that was really good, and that was the result of very careful and considerate planning. And I hope you can see that that is in good faith, that we want to keep within these numbers and kind of make everybody happy. So. Question for Peter, who enforces that? The inspector or you? The impervious surface would fall on me so I would review this after their project's done to make sure that they took out what they took out and that they're putting their storm water into the storm water detention area. I forget, are pavers impervious or pervious? They, they can be both. I think maybe I misspoke on that last meeting just because there was a lot of impervious, pervious flying around, you know. But the city under current ordinance, we can allow from what I read in the ordinance, to go over an impervious if they have an engineered product signed off by an engineer with a management plan. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. like, if um, an example would be a property south of town where the um, fire truck was on display, 
there, that property right across there, all of his asphalt is engineered, is permeable, so it doesn't count against his credit. So. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah. Did that answer your question on the, okay. Yes. So just kind of reviewing the reasons why there was a denial last time and we asked them to come back was to build out that plan um, where the deck is for the addition, which you have done. Um, we wanted, and I believe, actually I didn't confirm this, but parking is in the garage. There is no living quarters or anything in that Correct. area. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then um, confirming the removal of the, um, is it currently cement out there that you'd be removing? It wasn't, okay. It's cement. And then um, stormwater, we had reviewed that last time. That's still consistent, no changes. And that not to exceed the current impervious coverage, which you confirmed, <clears throat> went down slightly too. So, Any other concerns or questions that anyone would like to bring up? Well, thank you. Thank you. At this time, then, we're going to invite the public for an open forum. If anyone would like to address us, feel free to state your name and address and share with us your feedback. Tom um, we're 29825 Shoreview Lane. Uh, ditto to what I said for, uh, I almost said Mark and Mindy, that's what I always call them. <laughs> Lauren and Mindy. Uh, but Joe, uh, I have a driveway right on the north side of my garage in between our two properties. Happy to use that for their construction vehicles all winter long because we're not there in the winter. All they got to do is blow it out and happy to use that. Makes it really nice and easy because you can back right into Barter's driveway, come right straight back in. So uh, put my money where my mouth is, we're a good neighborhood, have no problem using that at all. And I'm 100% in favor of them doing that project. Thank you. Thank you. Wendy, we're 29825 Shoreview Lane, ditto. We're fully in favor of this. It can only help the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Wanda Mankey, 29863 Shoreview Lane. Uh, we've owned the property next, right next door on the north side uh, for many years, and uh, we live up there now full time for the last 20 years. And uh, we've never had a problem with parking or backing out of the driveway, which I think was part of the problem before. And uh, uh, I, we have no problem with them adding on. They're good neighbors. So that's all. Thank you. Larry Martini, uh, 29866 Sand Beach Drive. We're all great neighbors, actually. We just had tacos a week and a half ago <laughs> together. <so. laughs> um, but we fully support this. We're impressed with what they've done trying to meet conditions. And again, I go to your professional staff recommendation of approval, so we ask you all approve this unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we will go ahead and close the open forum and move on to deliberation. And I will start by reading the findings. The Planning Commission shall consider the following in its decision to make written findings concerning the variance approval or denial. First is the strict interpretation of the ordinance would be impractical because of circumstances relating to lot size, shape, topographic, or other characteristics of the property that was not created by the landowner. And we find that yes, the encroachment was created by a prior landowner. Number two, the deviation from the ordinance with any attached conditions will still be within keeping of the spirit and intent of the ordinance. And yes, the encroachment into the setback is minimum and pretty much in line with the existing building facade. Number three, the land use created by the variance is permitted in the zoning district where the property is located. And yes, the, um, it is a seasonal year-round residential use, and that's allowed in the zoning district. Number four, the variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. We find that, yes, the proposed request is residential, similar to other adjacent neighbors. 
Uh, number five, the variance is not for economic reasons alone, but for reasonable use of the property, does not exist under the ordinance, and we find that yes, the existing owners did not create the encroachment, the prior owner did. If strict application of the ordinance was applied, the existing owners would not be allowed to construct the additions as proposed. And then we recommend the following conditions that the first floor roadside addition granted through the variance is for vehicular parking, which we did confirm is um, their intent. So those are the findings. Do we have any deliberation or motions? I would move to approve variance application V24007. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. All right, moving on to item number C, which is the variance application V24008 for Robert and Linda Panner. And if Peter, you'd like to kick it off with the staff report. Madam Chair, members of the board, variance application V24008 for Robert and Linda Panier, property address 32614 South Bay Lane. <clears throat> the applicant has filed the appropriate application fee for variance. The applicant has paid the appropriate fee for the application and public notice that was published in the paper and mailed to neighbors within 350 feet mailing radius. Public notice was given to the DNR as the property is also in a shoreland area due to its proximity to Lake Ossawinamakee and the DNR declined to comment. Variance request is to request a variance from the required 30 foot setback from a wetland to a setback distance of 16 feet 8 inches to construct a 1,244 square foot garage. Summary of their property includes this property was subdivided through meets and bounds prior to the land use ordinance adoption. The property is in a lakeshore residential neighborhood bisected by the road South Bay Lane. The adjacent neighbor's properties are similarly developed with a resident on the lakeside and a lot in a garage or accessory structure on the opposite side of the road. The wetland appears to be a unique factor on this property to which requires a variance request on this property because the applicant is proposing a structure encroaching into that setback. The City of Breezy Point adopted wetland setbacks to keep development out of watershed sensitive areas and to discourage the development of substandard land and unsuitable areas. Crow Wing County is the delegatory authority when it comes to impacting wetlands with such activities like filling them in, building on them, or directing unfiltered stormwater discharge into them. Much of the concern the Planning Commission should consider is how the function of this wetland would potentially be affected by the proposed plans. City staff sees no significant impact as the wetland still has some buffer and the stormwater management plan proposed with the application appears to address and improve the on-site stormwater management associated with development of the property. Allowing the variance would move the structure also to a conforming area with respect to the property line to the north and improve that current condition as well, meeting the setback, whereas in the current, set, the current structure encroaches into the neighbor's setback. If the commission applies the strict interpretation of chapter 153 in the codes of the city, the applicant would still be allowed to keep the non-conforming structure and maintain it as it is in its current dimensions as it currently exists. Due to the de minimis nature of the encroachment, staff recommends the condition, the commission consider approval based on the information presented at the time in the application submitted. That concludes the staff report. If you have any questions, please ask. No response from the DNR on this one? No, I, their response was they have no comment on it, so. Any other questions or should we move to applicant? All right, we invite the applicant up to the podium. Please state your name and address and feel free to go through the um, request. Okay, my name is Colin Jacobs with Marka Architecture at 5411 Lakers Lane in Nisswa, representing Bob and Linda Pena at 32614 South Bay Lane. Uh, as Peter uh, commented, this is a, a, a expansion of a garage or a new garage for additional storage and recreation, demoing of the existing 638 
uh, square foot structure and building a 1,244 square foot structure. Uh, as noted in the application, we are kind of uh, limited with a, a window uh, with the uh, non-conforming setback on, on the north side, the wetland to the west, uh, proposed and upgraded septic system to the south, and the roadway to the east. Um, if you look at the drawing uh, that has the color coding on it, I think it's uh, the f one of the last two pages on the application. I think it represents it the best. Right there. So as noted, uh, the proposed footprint um, sits basically where the existing structure is and existing grading that goes towards the wetland. So the proposed uh, garage that is going back towards the wetland is sitting on existing grading. And then worth noting that the stormwater retention number one um, being behind the expansion and off to the side would allow for drainage into that retention area before it impacts any wetland. Um, other than that, the, it's a, a allowable um, size within the ordinance. Uh, we're just trying to fit it in there in that little window and make it uh, conforming on that uh, north side. And it appears that you're moving it further away from that line. Correct. Yep, the existing setback is 7.9 feet and we're getting that 10 foot setback on the, on the north there. Yep. There will be fill put in? There will be fill needed on the south side mm -hmm. of the new, mm -hmm. um, but that is why we jogged that there in order to utilize where the expansion goes towards the wetland. We're able to use the existing gratings as there and, and minimize the amount of grading needed for the expansion to the south. So I see there's proposed new septic or added on? It is updating the septic for the cabin, which right. also was damaged by some trees from the tornado. Oh. Uh, so this design is honoring the, the side setback to the building. And uh, per the septic designer, we could not push that further towards the wetland because of the grade that is happening there and the need for the mound system. So that's why it's L-shaped the way that he has it. Okay. Yep. So it will be a new septic. Correct. Yep. Madam Chair, is there a well on that side of the road for the bathroom? No, the well is on the, the deep well is on the north, or excuse me, yeah, the northeast corner of the cabin. Okay. Are you, is there going to be directional boring underneath the road, or are they proposing to dig that up? And then directional boring is okay. the, the better way to do it. Yep. Coming from the cabin. Right. And um, just confirming, I mean, it sounds like the proposed garage will match the color scheme of the existing cabin, so everything's going to be conducive to the neighborhood. Correct. Yep. So you have retention pond one. Is there a two? I don't see it. Yeah, the retention pond two is actually to the to the lakeside. On the, oh, on the down south there. Side of the cabin. Okay. Yeah. And truly, for the garage. We can work with city staff to, to get as much back on the, on the wetland side, but really it's breaking up the, the two, um, the, the volume needed in two different locations. We really don't have it, the, the north side of the existing garage really falls off to the north property. So, and there's not enough room on the back side, so that for the garage proper with the septic, that's the really the only location we can get that the majority of the retention for the garage property.
Peter, is South Bay Lane, is that a private road? I would defer that question over to Public Works Director. No. No? You plow that? Barely. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say barely or rarely? Barely. <laughs> um, I don't know how familiar you are, you are with South Bay Lane. Um, a few years ago, I believe a structure was put in um, where we did turn around. Mm -hmm. um, so now we can no longer use. So you have to back all the time? <laughs> well, we had to change our vehicle. We went from the dump trucks, um, they can't access it now. Uh -huh. Now it's that 450, and I'm able to typically turn around at the very end in uh, the gentleman's, it's not a cul de sac, it's just kind of the widest part of it. Um, it's a meets and bounds. The right of way it's never been defined. Um, most people would consider it a shared driveway, but it's been maintained the entire time I've been here. And it's traffic is very low. It doesn't require high amount of maintenance. Um, gravel maybe every couple of years. We don't dust coat it. Um, we don't wing that road. I mean, we can't especially towards, uh, I would say it's probably the southeast portion. Um, it's just cedar fences right on the edge of the dirt. Um, <laughs> and most people, I, I think we've finally started getting a couple more full-time residents, but um, my first handful of years here, it was uh, totally seasonal. So there's some change there, but mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, we don't have many, we have a couple other roads that tight north end of Channel Road is kind of comparable. It's a meets and bones road, but the right of way hasn't been secured and, you know, so. Any other questions? No. Any other questions for the applicant? Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we'll open it for public input. If anyone here in attendance would like to approach the podium, state your name, address, and feel free to share. We'll close the public input and move on to deliberation with the commission. And I will start with our findings. The Planning Commission shall consider the following in its decision and make written findings concerning the variance approval or denial. First, the strict interpretation of the ordinance would be impractical because of circumstances relating to lot size, shape, topographic, or other characteristics of the property not created by the landowner. And we find that yes, the wetland is unique um, attribute to this property. It adversely affects the development potential of the lot. Uh, number two, that the deviation from the ordinance with any attached conditions will still be within the keeping of the spirit and the intent of the ordinance. And we find that yes, the encroachment into the setback is minimal. Uh, number three, land use created by the variance is permitted in the zoning district where the property is located. And yes, it is a seasonal year-round residential use that is allowed in that district. And number four, the variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. We find that yes, the proposed request is residential, similar to the adjacent neighbors. They have similar sized accessory structures along the roadside part of their lots. And number five, that the variance is not for economic reasons alone, but for reasonable use of the property, and that does not exist under the current ordinance. And we find that, yes, granting the variance would allow the landowner to comply with today's property line setbacks and improve site drainage and stormwater management. Um, we would like to, we consider the following recommended conditions, which is, one, do not direct any unfiltered stormwater pre- or post-construction into the wetland area. So those are the findings and the recommended conditions. Do we have any deliberation or motions that would like to be made? Uh, I guess I'll make a motion to approve V24-008, the one condition that they don't dump storm water into the wetlands. Um, I don't know how you're going to do that with that retention pan plan, but I hope it works. We, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion has passed. Mm -hmm. 
And moving on to item number D, our final item under new business is a variance application V24009 for Bonnie and Joseph Straczynski. And if they would approach, or actually, we're going to start with the staff uh, report. <laughs> Madam Chair, members of the board, variance 20, V24009 for Bonnie and Joseph Stransky, address 30982 Wolf Lane. The applicant has filed the appropriate application. The appropriate fee for the application has been paid. Public hearing of the notice was published in the paper and mailed to owners within the mailing radius of 350 feet. Public notice was not given to the DNR as the property is not in a Shoreland overlay district. The variance request is a request from the requir required road right-of-way setback of 30 feet to a setback from a 30 feet setback to construct an 11.6 by 13.9 foot addition onto an existing non-conforming structure located 22.3 feet from the road right-of-way. Summary of the property review includes this property was platted or subdivided in 1964 as the 14th addition to the Breezy Point Estates. Prior to land use ordinance adoption, the property is in a residential neighborhood. The adjacent properties are similarly developed with single family year round residences. The city has established structural setbacks from roads and associated road right of ways to keep travel corridors clear, promote safe travel, sight lines and intersections, and to provide areas that do not have structures that could interfere with right of way maintenance and utilities, etc. The proposed addition does meet the right-of-way setback, however, the existing structure does not, is therefore considered non-conforming and requires variance approval from the Planning Commission for any structural expansion. This is common language in ordinances. It provides a mechanism that allows communities the time and the opportunity to review additions to non-conforming buildings. If perhaps the structure is grossly non-conforming and a public safety hazard, the community at that point can disallow expansions. <coughs> On the other hand, some ordinances do allow expansions without variances to non-conforming buildings when setbacks can be met by the addition. This has proved to be problematic in certain cases where a city would wish not to allow or encourage an enlargement of a non-conforming use but would be forced to allow the expansion. The Planning Commission should consider how approving this variance could affect the functional safety and maintenance of the right-of-way in this immediate area. Staff sees no significant impact to the road right-of-way as the addition is meeting the setbacks. If the condition applies the strict interpretation of Chapter 153 of the Code of the City Land Use Code, the applicant would not be allowed to increase the size of the structure due to the nature and the size of the non-conforming and the addition meeting all setbacks. Staff recommends the Commission consider approval based on the information presented in the application and at this time. That concludes the staff report. If you have any questions, please ask. And again, we have the Public Works Director that could answer any questions as far as road right-of-way. Um, maintenance requirements. Thank you. I got a, a question and it doesn't, maybe this is an appropriate time, but their fee is $250 and the people that came in with the doubles, their fee, their fee is 250 <laughs> How is that? That's what the variance fee is for, like the duplex. Seems like oops. there's, yeah. Or Seems like that one should be higher, and this one should be a hundred dollars, or you know, I don't, you know. It's, that's a good. That's question. a different subject, I know. That, and I, I shouldn't have brought it up now, but it we, just seemed out of place. We can discuss that in more. I, I think it's a germane topic to discuss with the board because, I mean, Breezy Point's variance fees are regionally quite reasonable compared to area cities. But that being said, with a variance request, um, it comes public notice, staff review time, and stuff like that. So it's interesting in the variance world, the state law doesn't allow, at least oh, to my knowledge, to, I yeah, see. like if you're going big. Okay. So, so what gets, it gets interesting when, the, the when when grandma has the lake cabin and wants to add six inches onto a deck mm -hmm. variance fee the whole thing uh professional developer comes in and wants to put up multiple apartment buildings their variance fee would still be 250 bucks 250 dollars okay so but very good question for that for sure
Sorry, I got off the track there. But <laughs> All right. Thank you for the staff report. And at this time, we'll invite the applicant up to present. Please state your name and address and review the application request. I'm Bonnie Stronsky, 30982 Wolf Lane, um, Breezy Point. We want to um, enclose a, an existing patio that's just cement right now. It takes a complicated roof system to do this, um, add this little teeny to cover up this um, patio. patio. Yeah, <laughs> it's an existing patio that we want to enclose. Main reason for doing that is to have an ex a half bath added down to our house. We only have one bathroom right now. Um, so yeah, and if you go all the way down, you can see this is a valley system and everything that has to happen, um, the drawings. Um, all the way down, you can see the, the area that we're in yellow that we're going to enclose. It shouldn't, it's not a, um, it's obvious. Already, already impervious. Yeah, and it wouldn't be even visible really to the street, well, or to um, Weaver's, Weaver's Point Road. We did buy the lot behind us, but we don't intend to attach that. Um, just just have it the way it is, not do anything with it. Maybe that's all there is. I don't think it's in yellow. There's a there's a survey too that we submitted that. Um, no, it's not in there. there. Okay. Well, yeah. See that little drawing in the middle there. So there's the garage. There's a breezeway from between the garage and the house, and then it's just this little patio in the back. Mm -hmm. and that's all. And you see where the line is there. The garage is ten feet two close to Weaver's Point Road. But I do point out that the neighbors are even closer yet to Weaver's Point Road than we are. The house was put there, I'm guessing in the 80s, we really don't know. Um, and I don't know what the setbacks were at that time, but I think it was conforming. But it, it is what it is. That's it. Is this on city sewer? Pardon? Is this city sewer or is this a private? City, city. sewer. City sewer. Anyone have questions? Mm -mm. Right. No. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll move on to public input. If anyone in the audience, I don't think there's anyone in the audience. <laughs> so we're not. We're going to move out of the public input and move and close the public hearing and move on to deliberation with the commission. So I'll start that with findings um, of the decision. Findings of fact. The Planning Commission shall consider the following in its decision to make written findings concerning the variance approval or denial. Number one, the strict interpretation of the ordinance would be impractical because of circumstances relating to lot size, shape, topographic, or other characteristics of the property that have not been created by the landowner. And yes, we find the structure was built non-conforming without anyone's knowledge. Two, the deviation from the ordinance with any attached conditions will still be in keeping with the spirit and intent of the ordinance. Yes, the structure's location is non-conforming, but all the addition meets the setbacks. And number three, the land use created by the variance is permitted in the zoning district where the property is located. Yes, it's a seasonal year-round residential use allowed in that zoning district. Number four, the variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. We find that the proposal request is residential. It's similar to adjacent neighbors and shares the same setback as a residence across the street. Um, and number five, the, the variance is not for economic reasons alone, but for reasonable use of the property that does not exist currently under the ordinance. And yes, we agree that without the variance, the landowner would not be allowed to do this addition. Um, there are no recommended conditions added to this. So those are the current findings. Um, any deliberation or motions from the commission? I'll make a motion to approve variance application V24-009. Do we have I'll a second? I'll second it. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion has passed. Thank you. Nope. Any old business to bring up? Or um, any staff reports? 
Madam Chair, members of the council, um, we have uh, a couple of variance applications that still might come in yet here, so they just kind of take a little bit of time. So we'll see see what we get for when that deadline passes. Um, we at the city seem to be getting like a real influx of complaints about um, camping lots. Usually that's on the 4th of July and it kind of stops then, you know, but there's a few of those going around town and uh, I'm working with, currently working with the PD office and stuff and addressing some of those issues. So that we have going on. Um, so a couple of them stubbed in power to some of the lots, you know, and made some investments in it. And we're going to find out that that's not going to be something that's going to work out. Um, how this could potentially involve the planning board would be, um, I would talk to the um, city administrator and see what he would feel on it. Um, sometimes if somebody like bucks an enforcement type of thing, like, nope, don't do this. What I've done in the past is I say, you know what, I'm just telling you the rules. I'm giving you the information. Come to the planning board and, and ask them if they will waive the ordinance. And that typically isn't something that's waived. What that does in an enforcement type of situation is it helps out with like an attorney and prosecutionary type of stuff. Cause they're like, they're like, Hey, it's just not a staff person going, don't do this. You know, it was heard before a judiciary body that is appointed by, you know, the city council and it has even more weight. So I don't think we'll get to that level, but just in case. And then I also might be looking for a little bit more direction in the fall just to run the idea past the planning members. If it would be a good idea for me to maybe drive some of the roads in the town before winter just to see um, some of the campers um, past experience in other areas. Um, kind of nice to give them a notice like right off the bat so they don't they're not there for a season then also the neighbors get used to it and it gets a little bit harder to kind of get them out so like squatters you know, <laughs> yeah yeah we got one that's particularly is going to be a little bit of a not difficult but it is going to probably challenge the process and find out that it's going to be expensive and lengthy for his project but so on a camper or whatever, if they move it in 30 days, they're okay? Current ordinance in most zoning districts allows camping on an improved lot. An ordinance defines improved lot as something with a residential structure that meets our requirements. So this okay. particular individual, I know the next move, he's going to say, hey, haha, I read the ordinance, I have a residential structure. And that's when I say, well, it also says in three different other areas in the ordinance that it has to be 26 feet wide, it has to be a house, and it has to have a certificate of occupancy for our, from our building official. That's the real plug-in when these communities like this made wise decisions, you know, you know, with building code related type of things, because I, I've worked in areas where it, there isn't and, and if we go, here's a permit, go ahead and live in it. And the neighbor's going, are you kidding me? I made this investment in my house and, and, and somebody's gonna be partying in a camper trailer every other weekend. So, and, and it's kind of nice and breezy point I'm finding as I'm getting more experience in working with some of the details in the city. You know, we also have campgrounds. So even if we went to court over it, it's not like we're saying you can't camp. It's just be in the campgrounds because that's where that is. So yeah, if there's ever an ordinance change that looks to remove the residential requirement as a resident, I'm not a resident in the city, but I would strongly encourage people to definitely consider keeping that on there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that, mm -hmm. what does the ordinance say about living in a camper while you're building a house on on that property great question six months six is months what it is yeah. yep and that's and that's a nice thing to have in, in this particular one that i'm going to be working on they're trying to gray that line by saying we're we're doing a construction project i'm going to say not only are your six months up we also don't have a valid permit issued for it. So yeah, it offers some flexibility. And then of course, if you have a residential property, you could have a camper, absolutely. You know, Technically, they're only supposed to be utilized for 14 days at a time so that somebody doesn't have somebody you know, living on the property necessarily. So but, yeah. there's a few of them around. 
<laughs> Joel probably sees that. <laughs> well, I've seen two of the, the VRBOs where they've people pulled in campers for the weekend or whatever. Big time. When you see that, let me know immediately. I have the list of the VRBO people, and you can call them even directly, like because they have. That's a great. I'm glad you brought that up because in our VO, VO, VRBO policy. From what I've been seeing, it's been pretty successful. It hasn't been a giant can of worms uh, because I have gotten some complaints. I call them, I'm like, not to be rude, but I'm just like, fix it now. And they're, and they're like, and it's in their best interest totally. They're like, thank you so much for calling because the people that didn't read their rules, they, they stuck one in back here a couple weeks ago or whatever. And then and, and that was kind of interesting. I don't know if you saw that, but I mean, they got the one out of there pronto because they told the people that were staying there they said you just violated your terms of the you know the vrbo yeah so yeah definitely let me know if you see stuff like that and you know because those you're you're totally right it's it's a it's a you know can be a little bit <laughs> concerning you know so okay any commissioner reports no. Then we can adjourn. Thank you all. Thank you.